In this video, we're going to be discussing the cervical rotation lateral flexion test. You might perform this test if the patient complains of neck pain pretty close to the cervical thoracic junction or CT junction, and also if they complain of brachialgia. You'll see that term in the literature regarding this test. Brachialgia is just a fancy term for arm pain. Not sure why they didn't just say arm pain. In any case, to perform this test, the patient's going to be seated, the PT is going to be standing behind them, and the PT is going to passively and maximally rotate their neck to end range in one direction. Now obviously I've rotated her neck to the left here. That means I'm testing the right side. So whatever side you're going to test, you always need to begin this test by rotating the opposite or contralateral direction. Okay. Once I've rotated her neck as far as it will go, then I'm going to side bend her neck. And when in a rotated position, that's just basically going to take this ear and try to bend it down toward her sternum. Okay, So it looks like this. That is the cervical rotation lateral flexion test. Now you always need to test both sides because what you're essentially doing is checking for a side to side difference in that passive range of motion, particularly the range of motion when you're bending her ear toward her sternum, that lateral flexion part. So a positive test is going to be hypomobility in one direction compared to the other, or an obvious bilateral hypomobility. So let's suppose I perform this test exactly as I've done before. I rotate her head to the left, which means I'm testing the right side, and then let's suppose that's as far a lateral flexion as I get. There's a clear limitation on her right side compared to the left. So what are some potential pathologies that could cause that impaired movement? Well, maybe one of them is simply an intrinsic hypomobility of the first rib. So if you have an intrinsic hypomobility of the first rib, the obvious treatment choice would be to mobilize the first rib, even manipulate it. And we'll be talking about that treatment in later videos. You could also have a hypomobility of the first rib that's actually caused by tightness of the anterior and middle scalenes. Remember the posterior scalene inserts on rib 2, so that wouldn't make any difference for rib 1, but the anterior and middle scalenes insert on the first rib, and if they're tight, they will limit the movement of that first rib. And the obvious treatment choice for this would be scalene stretches, particularly those targeting the anterior and middle scalenes. But the patient could also have cervicothoracic hypomobility, so impaired range of motion, in particular between the C7 segment and T1. And so one treatment option for that, other than just simple active range of motion exercises, would be to perform a CT junction or upper thoracic manipulation. And again, we're going to be covering that in later videos. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of how to perform the cervical rotation lateral flexion test, and then also what some potential pathologies would be if you had a positive test and what you would do to treat them. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. 